Um, it's time to bring up our next guest. This gentleman is from uh, Cabio Services. Please help me welcome Dr. Leo Archer. Here he comes. Good to see you. Have a seat. There's our, our mic man again. President. Good. <laughs> Good to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to uh, Crescent Crown. Thank you. Actually, you've been here before, and it's a beautiful facility, as you said. I may not leave. It's, that's how nice it is. I think there's cots in the back, but <laughs> I haven't found them yet. Perfect. Well, tell us a little bit about um, your role in, in this morning's meeting. And uh... Yeah, um, I don't know if people are aware, but Mesa has a Chamber of Commerce that has a leadership council. And so actually, Mesa has had the longest leadership program in the whole East Valley, longest continual program. It's 30 years this year. And within the chamber, we've tried to sort of revamp our participation in that. It's always been a chamber program, but we haven't been as active as a chamber, as a unit, as we should be. So we've developed a leadership council. The purpose of that council is threefold. It's the first to develop programs that will let people in the business community in the chamber learn about Mesa. And that means all facets of Mesa, uh, not just the, the city, it's not just a come see Mesa tour, but it's to see how this, this whole entity of a city works. And there's a general leadership program, as I said, the Mesa Leadership Training and Development Program, a nine month program that's in place already. Uh, you certainly should find out about it, and if you're not a graduate, you should be. Uh, all but one of our present city council have been through the program. We've had several uh, state legislative members and senators who have been through the program, and even some federal. Our second task is to help develop programs again that will help the business community uh, be more active in the nonprofit sector, be that in the service or in charities, uh, depending on your passion. And the final, and, and probably some might say the most important from the business perspective is, is to try and develop people who are interested in policy uh, to either run for office, be advocates, or be uh, um, people who go out and, and make sure that the business community is, is part of the decisions that are made for, for the, the growth of Mesa. So our, our primary goal is to get people together within the business community and say, hey, what can we do? How can we develop programs that will interest you, interest your executives, your workers, and help them know more about Mesa and how to make this city better? Okay. Well, it's pretty obvious you're, you're uh, passionate about Mesa. Are you a I've native son? Here. Are you from here? No, no, I'm, uh, I'm from a little further abroad. Um, born and raised in Ireland, came to the States about 25 years ago. Um, have lived in Mesa now for six years. Um, discovered through the leadership program that I actually had a passion for seeing this city be great. This is a city that has unlimited potential. And I promise you, if we do things right in 10 to 15 years, this is going to be something that, that everywhere is going to look at. And so, for me, it was an easy transition to come in and be involved in these things, because I think we've got a great city that we live in. But I also think it's untapped. We have too many areas that are just columnar, lots of little islands that don't necessarily interact together. And I think it's our responsibility as business leaders, as business owners, to be far more active in the community than we are. Otherwise, we'll get the community we deserve rather than the community we should have. I like the way you snuck in that untapped with the beer next door. That was awesome. Well, you know, I, it's, I had a draft proposal before I came in on that. So, but. The reason I ask, I could tell, I thought I uh, detected a little Irish uh, lilt here. But I, I could I, even I, tell. I'm in heaven right now. I mean, I can <laughs> die right this minute. <laughs> Except the Celtics lost last night. So. Well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> okay. I could tell you either, uh, I had it pegged either Ireland or, or Boston or New Orleans. Well, I'm pretty sharp that way. You know that I was actually uh, a, a, uh, the best ice hockey player in New Orleans, but that's not exactly something <laughs> that we boast about. No, it, it, it's, uh, it's Ireland. Very cool. Well, welcome. And uh, yeah, Macy's a fabulous place. And um, I know the, the leadership council's uh, got a big part of that. So we'll Yeah, I, I would encourage people. We meet once a month. Um, Dr. Pan from, uh, uh, from um, MCC and myself are co-chairs for the committee. We are looking for people to participate and active, be active in this. One of the things that we are now in the process of doing is developing some, some focus groups. We want to bring in executives from the business community, and we would like to hear how we can structure specific programs towards the business community. Now, we're not trying to be an MBA replacement. We're not trying to be an academic entity. There's plenty of those out there. What we're looking to do, for example, is develop a bridge program, which would be oriented towards executives who can't commit to once a month for nine months, who would like to do a more 
uh, shall we say, concentrated and perhaps less robust um, um, experience of the leadership program. We're also thinking about what we can do as some sort of a master's program or graduate program where those who really want to know where MESA fits into the state and deal with issues very specifically related to MESA's position in the state. There are lots of leadership programs out there. Uh, the Flynn Leadership Program, for example, has, uh, has, uh, deals with all these state issues, but nothing deals specifically with MESA. And so we're looking at, at programs that we can develop on this. And what we really, really need is for the business community to come and say, this is what we need. This is what will get you to get my executives there. This will what will get you to get my employees there. And without that guidance, we're not going to be as effective as we should be. So if anybody out here today is, uh, or, or watching us on Channel 11, is interested in becoming a, a part of the council, what's the next step? Next step is you can contact the, the chamber, and we do meet once a month. We're actually meeting this week, but it's a kind of a, a reorganizing phase. We are, we are, as I said, looking to set up some focus groups. So if it's something that you think you would be interested in being involved in, if it's something that you believe you have guidance on, I mean, my goodness, look at the companies we have here. We have Boeing. We have, we have uh, major players that are here with Crescent Crown. These are big employers who know what it is to run a business, but also know what it is to be part of a community. We need your guidance so that we can give the best possible program. Just one statistic that I, th I think is important. The best Chamber of Commerce around the country all have extremely active leadership programs. In, in some cases, these are full-time professional multiple classes per year programs that have a full-time staff running. We're the 39th largest city in the nation. We're the second, third largest city in Arizona. I think it's time for us to step up and, and have that sort of program. So I encourage everybody here and everybody who's watching to come and participate. Very cool. Uh, I'm going to display my ignorance. Cavio Services, what? Uh... Uh, Cavio Services, we, we do a number of things. Our primary um, businesses, we own Cavio Assisted Living, which is an assisted living facility. Uh, the services part, I also came out of the high-tech field, so I consult in, in a number of different high-tech areas. So it's kind of a, a catch-all for, for business. How would you, uh, how has being on the, on the um, Leadership Council uh, impacted your, your professional life? Well, um, when I came here, I guess, you know, like anyone else, we don't know too many people. Uh, went through the leadership program, and I have to say, with all sincerity, it changed my life. And as somebody, as somebody who's been through schooling, I've seen the world through my business ventures, and yet a little old program that took nine months in Mesa had a serious, serious impact on me. And what I found that came out of that is that you can have great ideas and that you can have great passions towards things that you, that you really believe can make a difference in your community. A lot of times we just don't know how to channel that. And I always challenge the class when they come in, one of the things I expect that they say when they come out is that the class changed them. If that's just learning one thing, then that's great. But if it's actually either finding your passion or finding what to do with your passion, then it's a worthwhile experience. Perfect. Um, anybody got a question for Dr. Leo? Yes, right up here. When's your next class? Next class? Yeah, the nine month class. Okay, so we've actually just finished our, our process for accepting uh, the class members for the next class. Classes start in August, they run through nine months. Uh, just very briefly, if I've got a minute, um, they're, they're based around uh, basically unit to topics. So we have a topic, first of all, the first class is kind of getting to know each other, but we talk about the history of MESA, we have experts come in in that area, we talk about leadership, leadership con uh, concepts, team building, etc. Then we have a day dedicated to policy. You'll get unfettered access to all the city officials, some statewide and even some federal officials when we can arrange it. We have a day dedicated to utilities and infrastructure, tell you exactly what it is the city does, SRP does, how are they managing water and power and so forth. We have a day around nonprofits and social advocacy. We have a day around arts and entertainment at the Mesa Arts Center and, and surrounding uh, activities there. We have a day around sustainable growth in the East Valley, which is out of Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. And those guys are great. You get a great, great view of, of the growth potential for the city, and then you also get to see A.T. Still University, or excuse me, uh, ASU Poly, we do a tour of that facility. The next month is education, and we deal with both third level and second level, and we have uh, expert panels put together and speakers from each of those areas. Then we have a business advocacy day, which ironically, we hadn't done in the leadership program, even though it's a chamber program in a very long time. 
That is a class that was actually done here, and, and thanks again to Neil for organising that. And we had a lot of the business community come and talk about where they see Mesa and where they see Mesa going. And the final class is on public safety, fire and police. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get to see some scenarios that the police set up for us. We do a mock trial. We have canine come out and you can put on the bike glove and, and let the dog go at you. And if, you haven't, if you've had it done without the, the, the panel, you don't need it done. But yeah, they, I saw your picture. That sounds so, like fun. <laughs> so it, it's, a very, it's a pretty comprehensive program that, that covers every facet, we believe, the major facets of the city. Good. Great question. Well, we want to thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy morning to stop by. How about a big round of applause for Mr. Leo Archer? Thank you.